Does the detector record the frequency of 30,148 Hz when the train moves towards the detector or away from the detector? That is the first question. Let's go ahead and take a look at our situation. The siren of a train moving at a constant speed along a straight horizontal track emits sound with a constant frequency. Right, you have a train, it is moving and it's emitting sound at a constant frequency. So the train is our sound source, right? And then a detector placed next to the track records the frequency of the sound waves. Okay, that is our listener and the results obtained are shown in the graph below. You can see that this graph that we have in this situation is different from the graph we had previously. So let's analyze this one and make sense of what is happening. So the time in seconds and the frequency uh, that is recorded on the y-axis, right? So here we have a frequency of 30,148 Hz. And after some time, the frequency recorded is 2,073 Hz. Why is that the case? Here where we have a higher frequency, that's where the train is moving towards the detector. And here where we have a lower frequency, the train is moving away from the detector. This makes sense because we know fully well that if a sound source is moving towards the listener, we have a higher frequency. And then when it is moving away, we have a lower frequency. So does the detector record the frequency of 30,148 hertz when the train moves towards the detector or away from the detector? When the train moves towards the detector because we have a higher frequency. And then 2,043 hertz when it is moving away from the detector. Let's take a look at the question that follows. Calculate the speed of the train. Take the speed of sound in air as 340 meters per second. So I need you to pay attention to this part. Right. So let's take a look at this. When the train is moving towards, we have a frequency of 3148 hertz. So let's see if we can use that to calculate the speed of the train. The frequency which is observed, FL, is 3148 hertz. This is when the train is moving towards. Right. And then the frequency which is emitted, FS, is not given to us. So we don't have that. And then our observer is stationary, the detector. So we have VL being equals to zero. We're interested on VS, the speed of the sound source, the speed of the train. And then the speed of sound in air is given to us as 340 meters per second. So we know fully well that FL is equals to V plus or minus VL divided by V plus or minus VS multiplied by FS. So FL, when the train is moving towards, uh, that is 3,148. This is equals to speed of sound in air, 340. Our listener is stationary, like we've said. So plus or minus zero doesn't make a difference. Divided by V plus or minus Vs. So what is the speed of the sound source? That's what you're interested in, 340. We know that it is moving towards when the frequency is 3,148. So we're going to have minus Vs multiplied by the frequency of the source which we don't have so this is what we have as you can see we have two variables vs and fs in a situation like this you should always remember that you just need one other equation because you have two unknown variables after you get another equation it's a matter of solving simultaneously so this becomes our equation one because we have two unknown variables and then now let's take a look at the case where it is moving away. When it is moving away, the frequency observed is 2073. And then speed of sound in air, 340. And then on the denominator, we're going to have 340 plus Vs. It's plus because now it is moving away. And then again, we don't know what Fs is. And then this is our equation 2. So we can use these two equations to find Vs. 
uh, the speed of the train so how can we do that right we can make fs the subject of the formula on the first equation and make fs the subject of the formula on the second equation after we do that we're gonna then be able to equate the two equations our only unknown is fs and we solve we can make fs the subject of the formula on the first equation by dividing both sides by its coefficient we're dividing both sides by this in order to make fs the subject of the formula so on the first equation we're gonna have 3148 divided by 340 divided by 340 minus vs this is equals to fs in our equation one and then in our second equation we're gonna have 2073 everything divided by 340 divided by 340 plus vs this is equals to fs so these two things these two things are equals to fs so we can just equate those two you can see that we were supposed to have our question three here but for the time being let me just erase it and continue solving question two because it seems like we're gonna need we're gonna need a little bit more space so let's carry on with equation two so we are equating the two equations uh, the first equation uh, that is three um three one four eight divided by 340 everything divided by 340 minus vs minus vs uh, this is equals to 2073 divided by 340 divided by 340 plus vs right yeah the physics is done here we just uh, solving the math equation uh, to be quite honest so how can you solve this uh, let's start by cross multiplying right so if you cross multiply i'm gonna get 3148 multiplied by 340 divided by 340 plus vs this will be equals to 2073 multiplied by 340 divided by 340 minus vs so let's go ahead and put these numerator on our calculators so 3148 multiplied by 340 and uh, this is 50,300 no that is the wrong um i substituted the wrong thing right let me put it in scientific because i'm getting a very uh, big number so scientific um when i do that i'm getting 1.0703 times 10 to the power 6 right divided by 340 minus plus vs this will be equal to so now 2073 multiplied by 340 uh, this is 7.0482 times 10 to the power 5. Everything divided by 340 minus Vs. Again, we need to cross multiply. So we have 1.0703 times 10 to the power 6 multiplied by 340. I'm getting 3.0. 6390 times 10 to the power 8 minus 1.073703, 7, not 73, 03 times 10 to the power 6 vs. I just multiplied this with this. Right now, I need to multiply this with this. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, that will all be equals to so 340 multiplied by 7.0482 times 10 to the power 5. So this is 2.3964 times 10 to the power 8. And then plus 7.0482 times 10 to the power 5. So right. Uh, let me group the like terms together uh, this is 
v s right so i'm gonna take this term to the right hand side and take this to the left hand side if i do that i'm gonna have 3.6390 times 10 to the power 8 minus 2.3964 times 10 to the power 8 being equals to 7.0482 times 10 to the power 5 vs plus 1.0704 3 times 10 to the power 6 vs so let me put the left hand side of my calculator 3.639 times 10 to the power 8 plus 2.3964 times 10 to the power 8 um we have minus here uh let me put that in my calculator i'm getting 1.24 two six times ten to the power h being equals to seven point zero four eight two times ten to the power five plus one point zero seven zero three times ten to the power six this is one point seven seven five one times ten to the power six vs so i need to divide both sides by the coefficient of vs so 1.2426 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 1.7751 times 10 to the power 6. I'm getting V has been equals to 70.00 meters per second. So there we go. That is the speed of our train. After doing this much work for this question, I'm not even sure you'd still be interested on that third question that I was talking about. But this third question was saying, let's calculate the value of T1. So you go ahead and do that and tell me which answer you get. This was a very long question. Not difficult, but long because we had to do all of this. Uh, so I recommend that you actually watch this part again because we did a lot of things here. But anyway, I'll see you on the next video where we tackle a situation that is different from this one.